Ashto T248, reducing field samples of aggregate to testing size. In most cases, the amount of material that you have collected in the field will be more than can be used in laboratory tests. The same care that you used in taking the field sample must be taken to reduce the size of the field sample to the size needed for testing. A composite sample has no upper size limit. The size is determined by you, as the field sampler, based on the field conditions and on your judgment and experience. However, you must always collect at least 50 pounds of aggregate for the final composite field sample. There are a number of methods for reducing the size of field samples to testing size. The proper method to use depends upon whether your samples are of coarse or fine aggregate. If your samples are fine aggregate, then the proper reduction method depends on the moisture content of the fine aggregate samples. First, determine the required test sample size from the method or test that will be performed on the aggregate. Refer to the test methods documentation for required sample size. We will review three methods for sample size reduction in this section. Mechanical splitters, which can be used for coarse aggregate and for fine aggregate that is drier than the saturated surface dry condition. Quartering, which can be used for coarse aggregate or fine aggregate with free surface moisture. And miniature stockpile sampling, which can be used for either type of aggregate. For fine aggregate, there are specific requirements determined by the moisture content. As a rule of thumb, if the fine aggregate retains its shape when you mold it in your hand, you may consider it wetter than saturated surface dry. Samples of fine aggregate that are drier than saturated surface dry may be reduced with a mechanical splitter. Samples of fine aggregate that have free surface moisture may be reduced by quartering, drying the entire sample at temperatures that are less than those for any specified tests, and reducing the sample with a mechanical splitter or cone splitter, or if the field sample is very large, you may make a preliminary reduction using a mechanical splitter that has chute openings that are wider than one and a half inches. That preliminary reduced sample can then be dried and further reduced using a mechanical splitter. Or treat the entire sample as a miniature stockpile. A typical mechanical splitter for coarse aggregate is shown here. You can change the movable bars to alter the chute spacing. A splitter must have an even number of equal width chutes. It must have at least 8 chutes for coarse aggregate and at least 12 for fine aggregate. Each chute should be approximately 50% wider than the largest particles in the sample that is to be split. This splitter has a hopper that holds the initial charge and by operation of the lever the sample can be fed to the chutes in a controlled manner. Begin by weighing the field sample having teared the weight of the sample containers. Ensure that the hopper is empty and that the chutes are clear. Empty the sample containers into the hopper of the splitter. Be careful not to overfill the hopper, as this could result in clogging the chutes. Level the sample out in the hopper so that approximately equal amounts flow through each chute. Once the original sample has been split, take the retained half and reduce it further to test sample size. All of the retained half sample is poured into the hopper. Next, one half of this split is discarded and one half retained. The retained half is then returned directly to the hopper for the final split. The final split for testing should then be weighed to verify that it is sufficient for the tests that are required. The second half of the final split sample may be discarded. However, if split samples for both the customer and the producer are required, the second half of the final split may be used. It is important that each sample be fully identified from sampling through testing. Required sample identification may include the sample number for the week, the week of the year, the year, the pit number or facility that was sampled, the type of the sample, such as stockpile or belt sample, process sampled, sampler, grade of material, and date sampled. Here is another example utilizing a smaller mechanical splitter for dry fine aggregate. This splitter does not have a hopper, so a pan is used that is the same length as the splitter. Pour in approximately half of the sample from one side of the splitter and half from the other side. 
Pour the sample into the splitter in a controlled manner to allow smooth flow into the chutes. It is important to ensure that the chutes are clean after each split. The final split is placed in a weighing pan and a brush used to ensure recovery of all the fines. Let's review the procedures for coarse aggregate sample reduction using a mechanical splitter. 1. Begin by weighing the field sample, having teared the weight of the sample containers. 2. Empty the sample containers into the hopper of the splitter. 3. Level the sample out in the hopper so that approximately equal amounts flow through each chute. 4. Once the original sample has been split, take the retained half and reduce it further to test sample size. 5. The final split for testing should then be weighed to verify that it is sufficient for the tests that are required. 6. Identify each final sample by tagging it with the information or documentation required. A cone splitter may also be used. The aggregate is poured over an X-shaped splitter located at the bottom of the cone. The gate is opened, allowing the quartered aggregate to spill into four buckets. Recombine two buckets from opposite sides of the splitter and continue quartering to obtain the proper test sample size. In quartering, you use all of the sample until two diagonally opposite quarters of the material equal the required test size. We will review three quartering methods. Quartering coarse aggregate with a shovel, quartering fine aggregate on a bench top, and the stick and blanket method. Quarter coarse aggregate with a shovel on a clean, level, and smooth surface. The surface should allow for only a minimum loss of the sample during the quartering process. Wash the surface to remove dust, aggregate, and other contamination. Remove excess surface water if the sample is for testing minus 200 content. Place the material on the clean surface. Using a shovel, mix the material thoroughly by turning the entire sample over three times. With the last turning, shovel the entire sample into a conical pile by placing each shovelful on top of the previous shovelful. Flatten the resulting cone-shaped pile to a uniform thickness and diameter by pressing down on the top of the cone with the shovel or other suitable device. Divide the flattened pile into four approximately equal quarters by splitting along two perpendicular diameters with a shovel, trowel, or other suitable device. Carefully separate the four quarters from each other. Ensure that material from one quarter does not become included with another. Remove two opposite quarters using the shovel, including fine material. Scrape the cleared spaces clean. Remix the remaining two opposite quarters and continue to quarter the remaining pile until the sample has been reduced to the required size. Remember, a final sample consists of two opposing diagonal quarters. Let's review the procedures for quartering coarse aggregate. 1. Place the material on a clean, level surface. 2. Using a shovel, mix the material thoroughly by turning the entire sample over three times. 3. With the last turning, shovel the entire sample into a conical pile by placing each shovelful on top of the previous shovelful. 4. Flatten the resulting cone-shaped pile to a uniform thickness and diameter by pressing down on the top of the cone with the shovel. 5. Divide the flattened pile into four approximately equal quarters by splitting along two perpendicular diameters with the shovel. 6. Carefully separate the four quarters from each other. 7. Remove two opposite quarters using the shovel, including fine material. 8. Remix the remaining two opposite quarters and continue to quarter the remaining pile until the sample has been reduced to the required size. A variation of this procedure can be used for damp fine aggregate on a bench top. Dump the sample on the bench top and mix well using your hands or a trowel. Once the sample has been adequately mixed, flatten the pile and divide it into four approximately equal quarters. Remove two opposite quarters, including the fines. Remix the remaining two opposite quarters. Continue to quarter until the sample has been reduced to the required size. The stick and blanket method is used where other equipment isn't available and the working surface is uneven. Place the material on canvas or other durable fabric. 
Mix the sample by lifting alternate corners of the blanket. Flatten the pile and insert a round-ended stick or pipe under the blanket at the center of the pile. Lift the stick to separate the sample into two approximately equal piles. Reinsert the stick under the blanket at the centers of the two piles at right angles to the first division. Again, lift the stick to separate the material into four approximately equal piles. After removing opposite quarters and remixing the remaining quarters, continue this procedure until the material has been reduced to the size required. The third method of sampling is the miniature stockpile. You begin this reduction method by placing the field sample on a clean blanket of canvas or other suitable material. Thoroughly mix the sample and form it into a miniature stockpile. Take the sample by selecting a minimum of five equal sized increments from random locations on the miniature stockpile. You may take the samples with a small sample tube, a small scoop, or a spoon. Check the weight of the final sample to ensure it is adequate for the tests to be performed. In order for reproducible and consistent test results to be obtained, standard methods of sampling and sample reduction must be followed. The producer evaluates his production using test results and statistical control methods. Samples must be collected using correct and standard methods or the statistical analyses will not be valid or comparable. Proper sampling and reduction is the key to accurate test results and data.